I remember the day my relationship with death changed. I was a young doctor, and in front of me was Anne, a petite 82-year-old woman who was in the final stages of lung cancer. She'd been unconscious in her chair for over an hour, head resting on the bedside table in front of her, oxygen tubing under her nose. It was difficult to tell if she was still breathing, so I leaned in close to listen. And when my face was inches from hers, her eyes suddenly opened. Breathless, but with absolutely no fear, she looked deep into my eyes and asked, why am I still here? I had no words. I'd been sitting with her for several hours. She said I made her feel safe because I was a doctor. Years earlier, she told me that the greatest lesson a parent could teach a child is how to die well. Now she was teaching that to me. She gently patted my hand, closed her eyes, and then Anne, my grandmother, my gran, quietly exhaled for the last time. That was the moment I truly understood what it meant to be a doctor. Not to get distracted by the little things that seem to demand doing, like fussing with IVs or oxygen when it's not important or helpful. Simply being with patients when they're afraid or vulnerable, especially when we don't have a medical fix. Having the courage to be fully present with another person for whatever happens, when all you have to offer is, I'm here for you. Standing calmly at the intersection of the art and the science of medicine. That was over 20 years ago. Today, I'm an intensive care doctor and I'm a hospital administrator. Doctors like me use life support machines to look after very sick patients and we see a lot of people die. Administrators like me try to make the healthcare system work better, and we hear a lot of complaints. In both of these roles, I'm a specialist in things that aren't going very well. And it's pretty safe to say, <laughs> it's pretty safe to say that I'm a doctor that nobody really wants to see. <laughs> For years now, I've seen the struggles that people face in our healthcare system. Difficulty accessing care, Long wait lists, poor communication. The pandemic didn't create these problems, but it certainly made them worse. Medical appointments and surgeries delayed or canceled. Hospitals and long-term care facilities locked down to visitors. And the news filled with stories of people, young and old, getting sick, being put on life support, and even dying. Sometimes dying alone. Do you know what else hasn't changed? The things that really matter to people about healthcare. It might surprise you to learn that complaints about how we treat diseases are rare. Complaints are almost always about how we treat patients as people. Treating, but not seeming to care. The art, more often than the science of medicine. Our healthcare crisis is crystal clear to me. Patients are getting more and more frustrated and are losing trust in the system. Care providers are getting more and more burned out and the financial costs are skyrocketing. Honestly, there are days when I think our healthcare system could use some life support. <laughs> but I've also come to realize that talking about death can be a breath of life for patients for caregivers, and for our system. Now, this takes courage because death is a pretty scary topic for most people. For medicine, death has been the enemy to conquer. Science has revolutionized our ability to treat illness, but I'll let all of you in on a little secret. Despite our success at helping people live longer, the death rate remains one 
per person. <laughs> when we treat dying as a failure to live, patients, caregivers, families, everyone suffers immensely. The financial costs pale in comparison to the human ones. Now, at the intersection of the art and the science of medicine is treatment that makes sense, both scientifically and experientially. What is best for someone, rather than what is possible. Moving from what can be done to what should. Not just helping people live longer, but helping them live well for as long as possible, right up to and including what dying well looks like for them. Because no matter what we do in healthcare, people will continue to die. And most of us, statistics show, will die in a hospital. Now, I know from experience that when caregivers are open and compassionate about death, patients share what they love about life, the things that make their lives worth living. This information helps us figure out how best to help because many treatments for life-threatening illness cost a lot, and I don't mean financially. What I mean is that they cause unavoidable pain and significant loss of function, with no guarantees that what we do will actually help. This is what we need to try to balance. Our technical expertise, the science stuff, obviously matters. But helping patients feel safe and cared for, the art part of medicine, plays a huge role in recovery. And it does one thing that science alone can't, allow dying to be intimate and even beautiful. Take Margaret, who was very short of breath from congestive heart failure. Medications weren't working quickly enough, and I felt that temporary support with a ventilator might save her. While I was examining her, I asked her about the things that were important to her. She immediately pointed across the room at her husband of 70 years. Marriage was an Olympic sport. She was the gold medalist of my practice. <laughs> she used to love gardening. She still loved listening to music and watching the sunrise when she had the energy. But she was afraid. She understood that life support might save her, but it would leave her unconscious unless she recovered. It was important to her to be awake enough to say goodbye to her husband if she was, in fact, dying. So we were at the intersection. Being awake was Margaret's priority. So together, we decided to try a special mask that straps tightly to your face instead of the usual breathing tube that we put down people's throats to connect her to the ventilator. Although the mask is sometimes less effective, it's most of the time more comfortable. And it would allow Margaret to remain awake and conscious while on life support. Unfortunately, Margaret got much worse early the next morning, just before dawn. She was lucid, but clearly dying. We quickly called her husband, and when I told Margaret, he's on his way, she gripped my hand tightly. Being with Margaret was what was important, so I pulled up a chair and held her hand. Simple, but not easy. Worthwhile? Without question. When patients feel safe and cared for, there's less stress on their bodies. This makes them feel better, and often they live longer. Margaret's breathing eased as I sat with her. It's good for the caregivers, too. Connecting deeply with patients is the antidote to burnout. It's what I love most about being a doctor. I could feel Margaret's relief when her husband arrived. His hand replaced mine. Her face softened. Her body relaxed. He was what she needed. Moments later, the sun peeked over the horizon, bathing the room in warm light. And together, they watched the sunrise. Margaret died a few hours later, calmly and peacefully, husband by her side, music playing softly in the background. 
Moments like these breathe life into our healthcare system. Why? Because talking about death helps patients get more of what they need, even when they die. It helps caregivers give more of what is needed, even when it's hard. The human costs are almost always less, and often it even saves money. <laughs> we can have a healthcare system that allows patients, families, and caregivers to genuinely be with each other. Because being with each other focuses time, money, and energy on care that matters to each of us. It's easy to get distracted by the doing because there's so much doing to do. Let's make more time to talk about dying with people we trust. Because when we do, we make the end of life an important part of life, rather than something to fear. This keeps us open to the beauty that's all around us, even when life is really difficult. It helps us truly care for each other, which allows all of us to live well, even as we are taking our own final breath. Thank you.